Welcome to Esoterotica's Future of Sex, May 25th, 2020. Tonight we bring you a double feature of longing, boldness, and desire. A quick trip into what will or could be. Ruby Shears writes from memories and deep abiding want of what her future will bring. I miss you. I miss your lips against mine. I miss your arms wrapped around my waist. I miss the feel of your moan against my neck. But this is fine. We talk all the time, sharing highlights from uneventful days, both of us counting up the ways we could ruin each other. If only I were there, or you were here. But it's going to be at least 14 days until any of this is safe, so we wait. The new norm of lovers who self-isolate. They say that absence makes the heart grow fond. But distance, distance makes the heart grow brave. To be less afraid. Day one sets the pace. Trading pictures that are more and more risque. Here, have my legs. Laid open in the morning light. With a wish you were here, caption in between my thighs. Hear my breasts, cradled and cupped in my hands, nipples erect, ripe and ready to be plucked by agile fingers or hungry teeth. Here is my ass, the rounded curve, a demand for contact. A siren's call for the sting of palms and the fingerprint bruises you always leave in your wake. Tomorrow is the day when intimacy finally meets proximity and we can both reach through the screen. Making love in the time of quarantine. And for our very first digital duet, here is Just Shannon and the Fisher Pete, who wind a fantasy into an all-too-real now, and then, and later. Uh, this piece has a trigger warning for some stalking. And references to social distancing slash quarantine. And it's called Prepper Couple Seeking Same, Part One. Had I magically known Switch when I first spotted her, it would have come as zero surprise that she actually found me. She seriously could find anything. I, I mean, she found you too. Well, Ezra here was easy. I had an eye on him for weeks after I practically tripped across him, taking my slightly rusty cruiser in for a tune-up. I know, I should learn to do maintenance myself, but I always figured bikes wouldn't be a reasonable form of transport for what's coming. You rolling up ninjutsu style on me like you did is the perfect illustration of... I know, I know. Story time. Shh. Right, right. Yeah. All right. So my tune-up was routine, but the place was slammed with panic buyers and repairs because the news was just breaking that businesses might soon be closed. But Ezra here was cool as a cucumber and quick, like scary fast. I was hypnotized by this masked person moving from bike to bike, hands working deft and delicate to detach and reattach parts I didn't even know the names of. I wanted those deft hands working on my delicate bits. I'm a sucker for fast fingers and people who can do things I haven't gotten around to mastering yet. Those first days were a blur. Every toilet paper hoarding weeble wanted to drop in for a tune and lube so they could pedal around spewing contagion instead of actually quarantining. I masked up and kept my eyes on my work. Gloves were already part of the gig. Industrial lubricants can fucking cause nerve damage. 
Yeah, the gloves were a nice touch. I hadn't dabbled in medical fetish at that point, but seeing gloves on him inspired some novel visuals I was suddenly open to. I definitely wanted playtime with this new crush, but admittedly, I also had long-term ideations of putting those quick gloved hands to use fletching arrows. I found myself rerouting my rides to pass the shop and watch him work. I'm not exactly proud of the way things escalated from there, though. <laughs> I'm still uh, way more flatter than creeped out, honestly. Oh, yeah, but I mean, there's a little online stalking. I mean, you're a fucking dope researcher. Mm. In hindsight, it still feels like it was a little much for then. I mean, now it's a totally different world. In any case, I deduced a few of Ezra's interests, and he was reasonably careful about what he shared online, and I liked that. Plenty of people kind of kill a vibe by advertising their apocalyptic advantages all over farmers only, you know? I finally unearthed a YouTube video someone else took of him at an atlatl competition. Ooh. <laughs> you saw that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Watching all those muscles work to hurl javelins with near-perfect precision to sink deep into their marks, that left me fantasizing about being a target for your um, other spear. I mean, what's an apocalypse without some end-of-the-world sex, am I right? I knew I wanted your attention, and now I knew exactly how to get it. You certainly did. I'd spied on his parkour routines, gathering intel and some gloveless, shirtless, maskless athletic fodder for my spank bank. It was easy enough to find an empty lot around his concrete scrabble gym to set up. I found a perch along his favorite route and set up, and he sensed my feathered intrusion right on schedule. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist a thirsty glance in the name of reconnaissance. Right. My first clear memory I have of this incredibly sexy human was it as a powerfully curvaceous silhouette raining arrows down from the top of an abandoned three-story parking garage into what first appeared to be a corpse. The dummy was erect, as though rigor mortis had set in while said X person was still casually on his feet. <laughs> Undead Fred is a self-healing phone target. 10 out of 10 recommend, 125 bucks a dicks. I stayed cautiously out of sight line once I noticed just how many of those shafts were actually finding their mark. And her rate of fire, oh, so sexy. Switch was not being precious with arrows. Pull, release, repeat like breathing. My breathing got heavier. Using a scope I keep handy for tactical observations while I'm out free running, I scan the splinters from her few wide shots and was beyond impressed to recognize that this Artemis was rapid firing fucking wooden arrows with actual split feather fletchings. No fiberglass and rubbery plastic to be found among the kindling. They must have been handcrafted. Are you hearing his attention to detail? Like, how could anyone resist that? Yeah. My admiration got a bit less academic as I became aware of a certain shaft of my own clearly hoping to be acquainted with this goddess of the hunt. Suddenly grasping just how much of a creeper I was in danger of being, I unobtrusively padded back to my truck and attempted to roll without grasping anything other than my stick shift. <laughs> right, you were the creeper. Uh, when I heard Ezra's engine turn over that day, I was so disappointed. I'd hoped he'd at least attempt to meet me halfway on this orchestrated meat cute. There was a sparks chance in a frozen hurricane that my quivering display hadn't had limbic effects on his specific dick. Then it hit me. I'd lured him to the tactical and social low ground. Relocating was actually a good strategy on his part. Clever. Hot. I ran downstairs to pursue him on bike, pedaling hard and working up a sweat to keep up. Nine blocks from that concrete archery range, I pulled over and honked the steering column with my forehead as the odds against actually encountering that lovely focused visage I had spied with my monocular sunk in. The combination of quasi-woke chivalry, magical thinking, and diverted blood flow had obviously robbed me of any attempt to make a move. Though, what is the appropriate opening line to drop on an individual expertly firing a lethal weapon? 
<laughs> I was already so primed. I would have accepted, hey, want to fuck? Yeah, yeah, but I didn't know that. And I figured roaring back in the F-150 and confessing that snooping on her shooting had given me a painfully stiff erection would have been unforgivably stupid. So I killed the engine and still surrounded by industrial rust belt nothing, decided it was time to get my heads right. So I took advantage of the isolation, eased my seat back and settled in for a hot, imaginative consolation wank near the corner of cracked asphalt nowhere. I'd figured you'd pulled over and honked for me, so I rolled my well-lubricated, new-to-me Frankenschwinn right up to the driver's side window, feeling a little anticipatorily lubricated myself, and I found you already unbuttoned in the truck. I smiled. You didn't. <laughs> Peeping toms aren't typically smiled upon. I clenched. You nearly scared the cock off of me. <laughs> yeah? Aww. Honestly, I was relieved to see you strangling your engorged javelin. It was nice to know that my little show had worked better than intended, and I'd be lying if I didn't admit I'd already jilled off that at Lattle video a couple times. I felt validated and also impressed that you didn't jump up or scream when I arrived, now that I know that this was a surprise. It was pretty deer in the headlights of a Peterbilt truck. Multiple coronary episodes and I couldn't thought make good enough to let go of my heart on. Running counter to my completely petrifying panic was the absolute throbbing lust. You being able to get the drop on me like that and staring at me like a dripping ravenous wolf was beyond my sexiest expectations for this lifetime. And you looked really good on that bicycle. <laughs> you flatter me. I was sweating like a gimp-suited northerner in a New Orleans summer. You know I think people on bicycles are like 10% hotter than when they're walking, no matter how sweaty they are. We're telling a story right now. Focus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your reaction at being caught dick-handed was just precious, but... I couldn't afford you the time to wallow in embarrassment. I reached for the door handle, which you'd visibly left unlocked. Always. Unlocked saves three seconds if you have to bail in an emergency. I opened the door and asked if you liked what you saw. It was a genuine question, but you were uncharacteristically frozen. So I followed with the less rhetorical, may I join you? And took your dumb smile and enthusiastic nod as consent. Indeed. FYI. Two adults fit fairly comfortably on the driver's seat of an F-150. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> I dropped trow on the deserted sidewalk and hopped astride you, leaned out over to ask for a kiss. And I kissed you before you could even finish the question. He wiggled his hips, begging for more. I helped him in, my aim being a bit better, finally sliding our bits satisfactorily together. You do do an awful lot of aiming, and I truly believe you could find any mark. Like a little end-of-the-world public car sex, for example. Bullseye! What's an apocalypse without a little end-of-the-world public car sex? I grabbed the steering wheel behind her lumbar and pulled up so hard I think I thrust poked her kidney. Switches strong fingers wrap like steel cables around my wrists and found all the leverage they wanted to drive my ass back into the driver's seat. Then, she leaned over me and grabbed the headrest. I heard the shocks and struts squeaking as she drove down, rode me rough, and then hearing went out, and I felt her primal scream as diaphragm vibrating against my iron-hard member because I was actually momentarily deafened as my own orgasm hit my brain like ball lightning and I lost control of my limbs. I came back online to sweet brine streaming from her flawless cleavage into my parched throat. Then we immediately went again. <laughs> it was so fun finally feeling those magic hands, exploring the bio machine I operate day to day, exploring my nooks and crannies and discovering what fits where and to what effect. And it could have been just that. Despite fantastic machinations, my actual expectations were practically null. But 
the big question once I'd claimed my initial target was whether he shared my principles regarding the impending rise of the undead. Little did she know I was way ahead of her. Didn't mean we couldn't use more hands, though. Right? And anyway, what's a zombie apocalypse without orgies? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Spoiler alert. Let's not give up too much intel on the first pass, shall we? <laughs> okay, it's just so damn good, you know? Anyways, if you're clever enough to get a hold of us and you really want to hear more about where this is going, we are very much alive. We hope you enjoyed our musings on what may come and that it has encouraged you in some way to reimagine your own future. In two weeks, we will be back with our theme, Let's Make a Mess, where we get dirty in a variety of delicious ways. Until then, please take care of yourselves and one another. Wear protection. Reach out where you can. Music tonight was Surge and Swell by Pictures of the Floating World. If you're able, please drop a tip in the digital hat. The money will be split between the writers who are mostly out of work. Thank you for listening to Esoterotica, erotica from New Orleans. As always, a sign-off from our own, Ame Sans Savant. Other than that, I know we can't wait to see you so very soon, but in the meantime, stay safe! Stay sexy and get fucked! All of our online shows are produced by Jeff Munsterman and Shadow Angelina. Sound recording and mixing by Jeff Munsterman. All rights reserved by the provocateurs of Esoterotica. <laughs>